First thing we're going to do is uh, go to the election of officers. These are for two-year terms, and um, the first office that we will be looking at will be the, uh, the office of president of the board of education. Uh, just for your information, I'll give you a couple of pieces of info that have been sent to us. Um, the uh, under Robert's rules of order, they were revised. Each member, each board member, may nominate only one person for the office of president. Nominations do not require a second. After all nominations have been made, the chair will take a vote on each nominee in the order in which nominations were made. The first nominee to receive a majority vote will be elected president. Um, and um, each member uh, may only vote uh, for one person on that. So in layman's terms, We'll take nominations, every how many we have in the order that they are nominated. Uh, we will then, after all the nominations have been uh, concluded, we'll go back and we'll vote on those as they were presented. And the first person to get a majority or three votes would be our president for the coming year. So the floor is now open for nominations for president of Lincoln County Board of Education. I'd like to nominate Mr. Priestley. Mr. Curry is nominated Mr. Priestley. Further nominations, please. Okay. If there are no further nominations, then I would move that the nominations be closed. Now, remember each member may vote. Uh, we'll just do this um, by uh, always vote and I'll just go and start at this end. So those in favor of Steve Priestley as president for the next two years, I'll just ask you to say yes or no. Mr. Yes. 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 Mr. Curry? Yes. Okay. Yes. Ms. Ben? Yes. Ms. Baker? Yes. And I vote in the affirmative. Okay. So um, I will serve as your president once again for the next two years. I uh, thank you for your trust in me and your confidence. well together and I'm sure we continue doing that. Okay. okay, having done that, now let's move on to the next order of business, which is the election of the vice president. It will follow the same procedure, uh, the vice president, for the next two years. Once again, every board member has the or the right to nominate one person. And uh, so the, the nominations are now open for vice president for the next two years. Can I have a motion, please? We'll call nominate Fred Curry. Okay, Mr. Wilkerson nominates Mr. Curry. For the nominations. Having hearing none, I'll uh, then move that the nominations for vice president be closed and we'll now have a voice vote. And those in favor of Mr. Curry as our president, I'll start this time with Ms. Yes. Baker? Yes. I vote yes. Mr. Wilson? Yes. Mr. Curry? Yes. Okay. So, uh, the unanimous vote, Mr. Curry to be the vice president for the next two years. And congratulate Fred. And it's good to have somebody who's uh, been uh, not only around here a long time, but he's also served in office. He uh, passed as president, vice president. So, uh, if something unfortunate should happen to me or I'm not here, I feel that we're in capable hands. 
Okay. The next item <coughs> that uh, I'll ask for will be, this is the, the school board association, and uh, each county is to have a delegate elected there. And as you may know, when we, ever, we go to school board conferences, um, oftentimes they will have separate meetings, and each county is all that's a member of the school board association and gets to have one vote. So that's primary the, uh, the purpose of this person and uh, you know, what they would like to do here. So uh, I know, uh, you know, I'll open the floor then for nominations for the school board's association delegate for our county. Can I have a motion, please? I'd like to make a motion uh, that uh, Carol Smith be our uh, delegate to the uh, school board association. Further nominations. That being uh, since there aren't any further nominations, I'll just move that uh, the nominations for uh, delegate to the school board association be closed. Carol Smith being the only nominee, uh, have that vote too. Mr. Wilkerson? Yes. Mr. Kirby? Yes. I vote the yes. Mr. Baker? Yes. Mr. Smith? Yes. So we have a unanimous vote for our delegate. Association. Carol's been involved in that in past years and uh, I'm sure did, she'll do well. She's familiar with things. Uh, Happy to be known in the board, but also affiliated with uh, some of the state activities. I think that would be uh, a good, uh, positive thing for us. And I'm sure she'll come and confer with us our little table when she gets there. <laughs> but, okay. uh, the next uh, item on here is our recent representative. As you know, each county. Uh, has two representatives on the RISA 2 board. That's our RISA, the superintendent and one board member. Uh, so this would be for the next two years for our RISA representative. Uh, so the board is now open for uh, nominations for the RISA 2 representative for Lincoln County. Can I have a nomination, please? Nominate Steve Priestley. Okay, Mr. Wilkerson nominated Steve Priestley. Okay. Nominations. We're still up for nominations for our recent two representatives. Not hearing any, I'll assume there aren't others. Uh, so I'll move that the nominations for recent two representatives be closed. We'll have a vote on that. We'll start with Ms. Smith this time. Ms. Yes. Smith. Mr. Baker? Yes. Mr. Yes. Curry, Ms. Yes. Wilkerson, and myself. I vote yes. Good luck. No. <laughs> No, I enjoy Trish uh, and uh, Jeff and I attend the meetings and uh, they're very productive. We pick up a lot of things that are going on statewide, a lot of the things from other places. And they'll have you know, the state superintendent to whomever they come and, and uh, it may uh, have even more bearing in the coming year because there's a possibility that we may be getting a new executive director for reasons reason too. And if so, uh, uh, Trish and I might be involved in that process. But thank you very much for your confidence in that also. Okay, the last item on here that we uh, as part of this reorganization as far as officers would be our uh, representative to the West Virginia University Extension Board. Uh, so I'll open the floor up now for the nominations for that. I'm going to nominate Mr. Wilkerson. Mr. Curry nominated uh, Mary Wilkerson. Nominations for the school board for the uh, extension board is represented. Yeah. If not, I'll move uh, in that the nominations for the school board representatives be closed. Mr. Wilkerson has been nominated and we'll vote on that. Here. No. So, yes. I vote yes. 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 Uh, Mr. Wilkerson has served that capacity for the last two years. Uh, I think he's a good choice. He's active. Uh, Things that they do, and uh, knowing his other vocation, it kind of fits in there well. So that's something he has an interest in, and, and we're glad to have him on there. I think he'll serve as well. Okay, let's move down to our next uh, item of business. Uh, this will be the adoption of the 2014 2015 board meeting schedule. There's an attachment uh, in your packet there. <coughs> Those that have agendas, you can see it in there. It's on the right hand. Trish is informing it's on the right hand side on the back page. Now, the right hand side. Mm -hmm. 
Now, um, as you may see, this uh, real board meeting schedule that we're proposing for the coming year is a bit different than the one we have now. As you know, now we've met, uh, have been, we've met on the first and third Tuesdays of the month. Um, this proposal would have us meet the first, third, and last Tuesdays of the month uh, at 6 o'clock as we do now. Um, there, I think there are advantages to that. One being we meet at least three times a month anyway, uh, but we would be we'd be allowed to be scheduled and we'd know when it would be other than us trying to decide, well, we need to have an extra meeting. What day are you going to be free? And we all go do here and trying to figure out what day and time it if it's stated, not only do we know in our available, but also the public knows that we're going to meet on those three times of the month. Um, and it has those advantages. I think it also has advantages of uh, the superintendent uh, being able to plan presentations and uh, times hearings and whatever, knowing that there are three options to do that. So I'll take a motion to, uh, I'm here I'm making a discussion without any motion. I'm not supposed to do that, but you can tell me anything. Have a motion with that, please. Right. Carol made the motion. Do have a second? Second. Okay. Okay. Does anybody have any other uh, comments about that? Any pro or con? How you feel about it? Well, I, you told me that you looked at the number of meetings the board had in the last year, and it was over three per month on average. Yeah, last year we met 41 times over a 12 month period. So it, it, it's clear having sat here during the meeting since January that the meetings go long, we pack a lot of things into the two monthly meetings, even throwing in the irregular meetings or special meetings we have to schedule. So I think it makes a lot of sense to ease the burden on Trish and her staff to try to pack everything into two days a month. I just want to confirm, uh, July the 16th, St. Mary's, is it actually at 6 p.m.? It's yes. not an all-day thing again. No, no. Okay, good. No. The one Seems to me like the last time we did this, this is the one that was mandated by law two years ago that all county boards meet with their fellow uh, county board superintendents and around or in their junior RISA. Uh, but it's, I think we met on a Saturday the last time we did it. But there must have been some complaints about that. And, no, this one's at 6 o'clock. It's at the same location. And as you'll see, this is a required meeting uh, by, the, by law. So we all go. But, uh, okay, any other discussion on our meeting schedule for the coming year? I think maybe I just sure. wanted to uh, point out the difference in the amount of time when you have the third, uh, really correct me if I'm wrong, within the policy, there are two days instead of the three days that the agenda would have to be out. Uh, so know, instead of being posted on Thursday, it would be posted on Friday. On Friday. And our policy shows reflected already. Because I, I, I when I was reading through I saw it, I didn't realize there was that difference until I saw that, but you know, anybody hasn't noticed that. Because especially since we meet on, if we meet on Tuesday, and then we'd have to have another agenda ready for next week, we'd be pressed to get the minutes ready and the agenda ready and have it ready by Thursday. Patricia's is correct. So one it's, extra day will really help. It states specifically, if you have more than two board meetings a month, you would be having three scheduled meetings. That uh, those agendas only have to go out two days in advance. Three, so I agree with Patricia. Just wanted to point that out. Okay. Okay. All right. Uh, any further discussion on the uh, doctor and meeting schedule? Yeah. I'll call for question on that then. Um, all in favor of uh, approving the attached 2014-15 board meeting schedule? Is that an yes, all <coughs> yes, yes, yes. Okay. Uh, the next thing we have to do as part of our organizational meeting is the designation of our law firm with Bowles Rights as the county's legal advisor for specific projects and area of expertise, and they're listed there. Um, I guess on this one, we just dif differentiate it. Everyone knows that we also have um, Mrs. Tyree, who works with Brisa, that we share with three other counties. Yes, sir. Yeah. So there's four counties that we all share. And uh, so I, I guess we kind of envision that those things that are more 
um, technical in nature may not be something that, that she typically works with for, which are personnel related things that we would uh, then go to a different company. And in the past years, we've been using Bowles Rice, which most boards in the state do. So if that be your, or any discussion for the rest of Question on that, then if we get a motion here. So I want to get Mr. Baker and second by Mr. Curry. Okay. No further discussion. All for a vote. All those in favor, send it all against vote. Yes. yes. Okay. Now, we've gone through that. Now let's go down and approve the minutes of the June the 13th, 2014 regular meeting. That's an attachment. The minutes of that meeting. Can I have a motion for that? I'll move. June the 30th of 2014. What does that say? <laughs> <laughs> okay. okay. Fred made that motion second. Okay. Made second. Any comments on that? Questions that all yes, yes. So I need all four of us here to help me out. I think the state's correct. Okay, now we're getting down to the uh, the regular agenda items. Now, first we have. Um, let me just share. And on the front of the agenda, you know, they our purpose in, in having board meetings are stated very clearly. It's in our policy, which is one which is also just happens to be coincidentally attached here tonight. Uh, but, you know, this is a meeting of the Lincoln County Board of Education in public for the purpose of conducting the county system's business. There is a time for public participation during the meeting as indicated in public comments. So, you know, we're here tonight to uh, have, act on business items, but at the same time we're here to hear from the public and to discuss anything that might be on people's minds. So, just the nature of the way things are done now. But the first thing we're going to do our public comments and that's this little pink sheet and I'm just I do this each time so just to explain to everybody um, people who come in and sign they must just they must sign in ahead of time uh, before the meeting and they're allowed to address the board now the only difference is since they aren't on the agenda we as board and the superintendent can't really converse back and forth with them so we can listen and we may take notes and all but as far as us actually, maybe they have a question or something, we really can't do that because of the open meetings law. Uh, there was a Methodist case in you know, Harrison County or somewhere like that where this was brought up that you can't discuss anything without the public knowing it. And if that item's not on there, then those that, not everybody is for every item on there. So if you've got something listed on the agenda, people may come out in favor of it, but they may come out against it. But when you come in and just sign in, the public doesn't know you're going to talk about it. That's why it's done that way. So anyway, uh, we have Marissa Freeman. Uh, would like to uh, speak to us. Well, I came because I've been trying to get a position in a different county, and I had interviews last week, and I got a call this morning that I had a job offer, and I would like to accept it. Um, that I'm not on the agenda because I didn't know until this morning. So, but I, I live, we bought land, we live in Ona, and I was teaching six years and I enjoyed all six of them at Hamlin, and I got transferred this year to Duval, which I have absolutely nothing against Duval. It's just another 15 or 20 minutes down the road, and it's gonna make it more complicated for me to get up and get there in the morning and get my three kids who are in Cabell County Schools dressed into school and get to Duval on time that starts earlier than Hamlin. And I didn't want to give it up, but now that I have an opportunity close to where I live, I would like to be released from my contract. Okay. Ms. Freeman, have you spoken to Mrs. Lucas at all about this? I talked to Ms. Lucas this afternoon. Okay. Well, so, as you know, from my words I've said here before, what I've said before, we really can't add something to the agenda that we're going to act on an action like we can't do that. Uh, now I don't know in your all's conversation uh, with Mrs. Lucas is amenable to uh, uh, allowing you to be released, but that really would be up to her. Now we will meet again on the 15th of July, but uh, you know, we would require or ask if Mrs. Lucas, uh, if she's going to recommend that to us, because she must recommend it when we act on these recommendations. Mm -hmm. 
but we can't do anything tonight because it's not listed. But we will meet based on our new meeting schedule on the 15th, which is the week from tomorrow. But I'm, I'm not privy to how what your all's conversation has been. But, uh, we certainly understand what you're saying, even the basis behind it, and all that. And if it works out, uh, we're glad for all the service you did provide for us here in our kids in this county. But uh, maybe tomorrow you could get in touch with Miss Lucas and you all can kind of see where we are on this. And if she feels that that's appropriate and all that, then it should appear on our next agenda. And if, she, if it isn't, then I would expect you to share with us why she would not want to do it. But, you know, right now we're out in, in the dark because we don't have any of the details. Okay. But we'll certainly continue. Okay. Thanks. Thank you. 